So um, not really a speechman, more of a storyteller. So uh, Mr. Bernie, believe it or not, my history teacher, it's been 25 years since I graduated from Brother Rice and sitting in the exact same chair that you all are sitting right now. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my, myself, um, personal story, where I grew up, kind of how I got to this point. And then he's also asked me to give you guys some advice, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so anyways, I grew up in Troy, Michigan, uh, regular background, I've seen you guys, you guys have, and went to Brother Rice. And you guys got to think back to when you were a freshman, right? Think about that experience when you first walked into Brother Rice. Of kind of how intimidating it was, right? You look at the seniors, how old they look, how big they look, and you're this dorky freshman coming in, you know, how the heck am I going to make all this work, right? Well, I was one of those guys. And I was fortunate enough to have, say, a wonderful experience at Brother Rice. Uh, academically, I did well. I wasn't the valedictorian student, so I had to work hard. I got in a you know, high 3.0-ish, 3.0 average. But I was blessed as an athlete, and my, my gift was speed. I could run really, really, really fast. So fast forward to me sitting where you guys are right now. I, you know, I was lucky enough to basically have won everything. We won state championships, Midwest championships. The, the cross team was undefeated, one of the two lacrosse teams ever at Brother Rice to do that. I was captain of the team, captain of the hockey team. I can't even remember all the different sports awards because one of the things that happened to me at Brother Rice is I got addicted to winning, is that we were very, very fortunate that whatever team, whether it was hockey, lacrosse, and even the sports that my buddies played, we were always very, very successful. So here I am sitting here right now thinking to myself, I mean, I got it going on, man. President of the senior class, I just got into Princeton, I'm half the lacrosse team, half the hockey team. We won all these championships. I'm a pretty badass too. <laughs> so, going to Princeton, I was the only guy in my class. I didn't know anybody. And I show up my first day, okay, my first day of college, I was so nervous that on the drive out there, I got this huge beaver blister on my leg, right? And so you want to make a good impression, you're trying to meet people, you got this huge sore on your face, and I'm going, oh my God, you know, this is like all wound up, what's, what's going on here? So I meet the very first people I meet. Literally, my parents are loading my stuff in my room, I'm helping them out, and I meet some kids, and they, they come to me, and they, they say, Oh, what was your name, Dave? He said, where did you go to prep school? He said, I went to, I went to Brother Rice. And they started laughing at me, and they said, what the hell is that? <laughs> and meanwhile, I didn't know what an East Coast prep school was, like Show or Exeter or Andover Academy, where like really rich people spend 60 grand a year to send their kids to boarding school. I had no idea what that was. But all of a sudden now, I find myself you know, fish out of water. No one gives a crap now that I was the guy from Brother Rice. I'm starting all over. You're starting at the bottom, right? That feeling you guys had when you were a freshman, you better enjoy the summer. Starting now, because in about 60 days, you're about to hit the reset button. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's a, it's a big kind of coming down to earth experience. Because now all of a sudden, the same thing. You're looking at the guys in your cross team going, these guys look like men. I mean, they're four years old, but they're big and they're strong. And here I am now, this strong freshman all over again. How am I going to make this work? So the coach is giving you all this romance, telling you how great you are. The second you show up as a freshman, you're just a scrub again, right? So I show up on the lacrosse field. Out of 45 guys, worst guy in the team. Okay? It was really, really hard. The practice moved so fast. Everything was happening so quickly. They were using terms I'd never heard of. I didn't even know what to do, so I was running to the back of the, the, the lines trying to figure out how it was all working. And after, 
After about five weeks of just getting my, my butt kicked in, I really didn't, I, the only friend I had was my roommate. I, I basically decided to quit the lacrosse team. I said, there's no way I can keep doing this. I mean, to be, to be perfectly honest, my, my pride was shattered, right? I had, a, I'd say, a fairly high opinion of myself until this experience happened. <laughs> and now I'm sitting there going, I don't even, not only do I not want to play lacrosse, I don't even, I don't really want to be here because I don't fit in. These people, you know, aren't being nice to me. I really haven't made any friends. You know, what, how is this all going to work out? So what I did is I decided just to not show up for lacrosse practice one day, and I called the hockey coach. I said, Coach, you know, I'm a really good hockey player. I'd love to play on the team. He goes, hey, why don't you come out? So I come out, I, I uh, skate with the team. He goes, we'd love to have you. So, um, so then all of a sudden I said, this is awesome, but now I'm playing on the hockey team. Well, I didn't tell the lacrosse coach that I had left. <laughs> Finally, he calls my room. He says, where the hell have you been? You haven't been at practice for four days. I said, you know, Coach Tierney, lacrosse just wasn't for me. It was too hard. You know, I'm, I'm the worst guy in the team. I don't know what's going on. I feel more comfortable with hockey, so I'm playing hockey. He said, okay, you gotta come to my office and talk to me. Go in, slam the door, sits me down. We're in a Catholic environment here, so I can't repeat all the expletives that roll off his tongue. But it's basically, he recruited me. His responsibility was to teach me how to be a lacrosse player. There's no way that I'm playing hockey, that I have to make a commitment to the lacrosse team. There's no way that I can give up at this moment, and I've got to make a decision. So here I am now on the spot by my college lacrosse coach, feeling totally embarrassed and on the spot. I said, you know, I didn't even want to play on the hockey team anyways because they're not very good, and nobody likes the coach. So then I didn't have the guts to tell the hockey coach that I wasn't playing. So this is before voicemail. I had the answering machine, so I waited until at night. I could just leave him a message. You know, the dumb things that we do when we're 19. I said, you know, coach, I'm, uh, I'm just not going to cut it. I mean, I decided to stick with lacrosse. But meanwhile, Coach Tierney had already called the hockey coach and told him what I said. Said that the players didn't like him, and I didn't think he was a very good coach. You talk about burning a brick. I get this scathing message from the hockey coach. Now my whole world's collapsing around me because I don't have hockey to fall back on anymore. I go, I gotta make this lacrosse thing work. But I gotta tell you, and I'll circle back to this, I came this close to quitting. I came this close to not playing lacrosse, this close to even reconsidering my career at Princeton. And I can tell you right now, if I did that, all the stuff that you just heard would have never happened. So I sucked it up. I played on the team, and you know, I was decent. I got a little bit of playing time, but you know, I wasn't a freshman feed out. And the coach sits me down and says, in the summer, we want you to be a starter. You better go home, work hard, do whatever it takes to be ready. And I go, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, coach. Because we're gonna start next year. Tell me, you're gonna start. I go, how can I start? I've never even played. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's the speech they tell everybody. Like that's the summer speech to go work hard. But I thought he was talking to me. So I worked really hard, get myself ready, and lo and behold, I, I you know, ended up starting against Johns Hopkins. And Chris, Chris has heard this story before, but I ended up playing him from a sophomore. Never, never played a game. He's got me starting against Johns Hopkins against their best attackman, senior, leading scorer in the NCAA in the whole country. This guy looks at me, like, who the hell is this guy? I've never even heard of him. I was so nervous before that game. When, you go to, when, they, when they announce you at Hopkins, the whole fans, 14,000 people say, who's he at the same time? When they said David Morrow from Detroit, Michigan, they all started laughing. Laughing. So I'm sitting there, I'm so nervous, my heart's beating. Anyways, fast forward, we win. The guy gets one assist. First time he's ever been held to one point in his entire career. I've never been interviewed by reporters. They come rushing up to me saying, what was it like to cover Matt Panetta? What was it like? He's the best player in the country. And I, I said, 
honestly, he really wasn't as good as I thought he was. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, because that's really what it was. I built this guy up to be this big hero. So then the coach pulls me off, and the next thing he goes, Dave, that's pretty big balls. Look what it says on the front cover of the Baltimore South Sports section. He really wasn't as good as I thought he was. Because you realize you have to probably play this guy anymore. But what happened at that moment, guys, and this is this is this was a I remember it like it was yesterday, is a self-confidence started to grow within me. And it was an event, that moment was something I never thought I could do. Well, all of a sudden I kept getting better, better, better. All the things that you heard, my lacrosse career took off. Um, it went way beyond my wildest expectations. When I was a freshman, the goal I set for myself was I wanted to be a starter. I ended up becoming the best player in the country. And, and what happened is I just took a very relentless attitude of whatever it takes. And that's basically what I picked up here at Brother Rice, is I was able to take those same skills, those, that same desire to win, desire to compete, to translate that into my lacrosse career. And, you know, the, the moment of winning a national championship at Princeton, to put that in perspective, we have never, ever won a national championship in lacrosse. Princeton's lacrosse team had a losing record for 25 years. So the team was 2-13, and 3-12. and 12. I mean, a doormat team. And this new coach recruits me, and he says, in four years, we're going to win a national championship. I go, yeah, right, right. It's a psycho get in Princeton, right? Win a national championship. But I also, at that moment, as the team got better, and my junior year, we did win the national championship, I learned a very valuable lesson, and that's the power of dreaming big of having a huge dream. A dream so big that even at the time, I couldn't, I couldn't really fathom that. You guys on the team couldn't get there. But an inspirational leader, our coach said, we're gonna win a national championship, and it happened. And the reason it happened is because we had a great team. I mean, we played teams that were much better than us, just outworked them, outperformed them. That year we won the national championship was when I came up with the idea for the titanium handle, right? And just so you guys are all clear, I was not the guy sitting around saying, how am I gonna make a ton of dough with some lacrosse invention? That was not me. It was just, I needed a better stick because the way I played is I beat people so hard that my stick would bend all the time. So I needed something that was stronger, just out of necessity. No idea it was gonna become a business. I wasn't a business major, I was an English major. My fort I was fortunate enough to have a father who was an entrepreneur who ran a lot of small businesses and always had a zeal for trying something new. And he backed me and gave me a, gave me a small loan. But the, uh, the guy that really made the difference for me is my college roommate talked about how your life changes. Um, he actually was in what I now have learned as the most successful business model I've ever seen. And I didn't realize this until I started hanging out with people. He was in this business called the inheritance business. <laughs> and the way this works is if you're born to the right family, you have a ton of money. And it's because some dude, like a great grandfather or grandfather, someone worked really, really hard, and then all these people get their benefit from it. So thank God I met this guy. His father was the father of HCA, which is a $32 billion healthcare company, right? So when we, when, uh, we graduated, I needed to fund a company. Billy, my college roommate, my buddy was the one who gave me the seed money to really make it happen. And with Warrior, all I did was just follow the same principles that I learned at Brother Rice, the same principles that I learned at Princeton. I had to have a big vision. We wanted to build a world-class across company. We had to believe that it was possible and had to build a great team. And what I did is I just hired all the guys that I played with. When I was playing on the US national team in 94 and 98, all the guys that I played with, I hired sales guys and designers and developers and just learned it along the way. But you know, this idea of never giving up, 
by the time I was a senior in, in college and, and had the success that I did playing lacrosse, I realized now that all I got to do is take this skill and start applying it to my life. And I got to say, it's been it's been an amazing journey. And one of the things that I got to tell you guys is people say, high school, college, you better enjoy it because those are the best years of your life. After that, then eh, that's a bunch of BS. I'm telling you right now, yeah, high school's fun. And yeah, college is fun. What was really fun is having a big dream that you've gone out there and you set a goal for yourself and you accomplished that dream. And I gotta tell you, you know, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you guys is that along the way, all this journey is, is a series of small decisions. You say, well, what the hell does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. Is that you guys know, we don't need to go into all the detail of all the temptation, of all the stuff that goes on, because I know, right? I was in high school, was in college. You guys have gotten this far. You guys have made the right decisions to be sitting right here. But I can tell you right now, in two months, the temptation, the things you're going to see, the things you're going to be exposed to, are nothing like you've seen over the past few years. Nothing. Then you got to start making the real hard decisions. Do I get my ass out of bed and go to class? Do I do that thing that I know I should do? Do I not do that? I'm not telling everyone to not have fun, but you gotta have to learn how to balance it. Because what happens, guys, and I hate to say this, most people will make the wrong decision. They just do, for a lot of reasons. But the good news is, for those of us that want it, and those of us that do the right thing, it makes it that much easier. You look around at all these guys that you love here, all these guys who had this wonderful experience. I hate to say it, but after four years of college, there's going to be some carnage. There's going to be some fallout. There's going to be, unfortunately, some guys you know. They may not be in here. They may be other friends that make the wrong decisions, and it changes their life forever. Because I'm telling you, I had a good time in high school, and I had a lot of fun in college, but I made a decision because once I started working, I go, most people don't really work hard. You know, they only work a few hours a day and kind of mail it in, pretend. I said, the, the deal I made with myself is I'm gonna work seven days a week for the next seven, eight years, see what happens. I'm gonna try to cram a whole lifetime for the work within a decade. I had a wildly successful business. Uh, they talked about selling it to New Balance. You know, this, this was not something that was planned. I had the opportunity to sit across the table from really one of the wealthiest men in the world, Jim Davis, the owner of New Balance, is a self-made millionaire, bought New Balance in 1971 for 10 grand, grew it into a multi-million dollar global footwear brand. But that's the guy who I was sitting across from when I was 31 years old, negotiating to sell my business on my own. And it was the culmination of all those experiences I'm telling you about. My time at Brother Rice, my time at Princeton, my uh, lacrosse career, all that wrapped into one. Sitting there at that one moment saying, am I, am I really gonna do this? I mean, I was so nervous before when he invited me up into his office. Again, I was at that moment where I said, I can't do this. I was gonna run out of the building. And then when I hit the elevator to go up to the to go up to his office to talk to him, my heart was pounding so hard I couldn't even hear myself think. And then here I am sitting across from arguably the, one of the most successful men in the world, trying to negotiate to sell my business. And before I could get out a number of what I was going to tell him I wanted, he offered me more than what I was going to ask him for. And then 31 years old, my life changed. And you talk about having the decisions, and you talk about making the right decisions, I was faced with a whole other life-changing experience and having to deal with that. But I can tell you guys that the best part of it 
is the next day, is what's going to happen, is that you guys are in a position right now to take control of your lives and do whatever the hell you want, is that nobody can laugh at your dream, is that whatever it is, whether it's business, whether you want to be an educator or a coach or an artist or a musician, whatever it is, have courage, have guts to, to believe it, to say it. And when people laugh at you, because they will, many people didn't laugh at me when I started Warrior. Of course they did. You know how many people told me it would never work? Right? I've been hearing that my whole entire life. And to be honest now, I love it. Is that that's I look for that. I look for the next challenge that people tell me I can't do, and then I just go do it because I know I can. And the reason I'm telling you guys is because I know every single guy sitting here has that same opportunity. You made a decision to take this path. And right now, I, I can't tell you enough, this kind of do-over that's about to happen in 60 days, it's going to be pretty shocking for some. And I want to leave you guys with this. No matter what happens, no matter how hard it gets, no matter what mistake you make, no matter who laughs at you, no matter who tells you it can't be done, never, ever, 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 ever give up on that dream, never. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be hard. It's going to be miserably hard. And you're going to find yourself, all of you, from certain times, particularly in college, in some very compromising situations. It's just gonna happen. And you gotta have the courage to do the right thing and to make it out and to keep chasing that dream. Because when you do, your life will never be the same. The effect that you will have on the people around you, the effect that you'll have on the school, you know, have, have guys like yourself rise up and achieve greatness, whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's an awesome thing. And whenever Mr. Bernie asks me to come back and talk to you guys, I, I look forward to it. And I, I love it because if, if there's just a handful of you, you know, that are saying, I, I get it, I get what this guy's saying, that's all that, that, that's all that matters to me. Because the, the best times are ahead of you. You're gonna have an awesome time in college, but it's just going to keep getting better, guys. Life doesn't end after college. You guys follow your dream. You go out there and you do exactly what you want to do. Every single day, you're going to get up and you're going to love it. Because right now, I'm 42 years old. I can do whatever I want, go whatever I want, do whatever I want. And I love it. I've got a great family, a great life. And what I was just telling Mr. Bernie is, the biggest challenge I have now, which people always ask me to say, what's next, is I've had a lot of success in sports and a lot of success in business. The thing that frightens me most, I have four kids. <laughs> I have a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, an 11-year-old. I gotta tell you, I know you're in this like testosterone-induced phase that you guys are in, I totally remember it. You're sitting there, and your parents are going, I can't believe my kid is going to college in three months. <laughs> what, what are they gonna do? And I can tell you right now that of all the business challenges I've had, all the sports challenges I've had, you know, being a good father and a good parent is, is, is by far the, big, the biggest challenge I've ever had in my life. Because you screw up in sports or business, whatever. But you do a great job as a human, you can have a huge impact on the world. If you don't, it could get really ugly. <laughs> and you guys, I don't, I don't say it enough, but I wouldn't be here without the love and support of my parents. I know all the hard work that your parents have put in to get you to this point. And in your own way, you gotta, you gotta give your mom and dad a hug and tell them how much you appreciate what, what they've done for you. Because uh, I can tell you right now, they're gonna be sitting there thinking to themselves, what in the heck are these guys doing, right? What is going on? But the good news is, guys, is I know you're going to make the right decisions.
I really appreciate having the time to talk to you guys. Have the courage, have the courage to think big, follow your dreams, and anything can happen. Thank you very much.